Okay, quick one on how to uh, cast from a blueprint to a meta sound. So first of all, we need a meta sound source, uh, and you want that and not the meta sound because that's for internal stuff. Okay, so let's just name this and then we'll open it up. And then I'm gonna get myself a wave player. And let's just find an asset here. And let's just hook this up with the plate. And then change this to stereo also because uh, it's a stereo source. And then let's connect this. Let's move this on finished to the side for now. So what I can now do is to take this meta sound and just place it in the game. And let's just play. Works. But what I want to do is to be able to control the start and stops and the real time parameters. So let's go and get ourselves a trigger box. Cool. And let's just adjust this and put it into the right position in the game. Okay. So let's just open this up in the level blueprint. And then we can get our trigger boxes uh, on begin overlap from here. Okay, so uh, let's get this, and then we are gonna uh, connect this to the meta sound by using just a spawn sound 2D allocation. That's this other way of doing this also, but for now we'll just use this. Cool, and let's get our meta sound. And then from here we're gonna cast to this, and we're just gonna cast a trigger because we just wanna start this. So we'll get return value and then type in trigger, we get execute trigger parameter. And then that's all we need to do. Uh, and then we just need to give it a name. So let's call it start. Seems applicable. And then let's jump over to music here and replace our own play uh, trigger and create our own. So we're gonna promote this to graph input and then rename this to start. And let's just see if that works. And I can, of course, also add uh, on end overlap so we can stop the music. So let's just select our trigger box here and jump back into the blueprint and then get the on end. Cool, and we don't need to create a spawn sound. We just need to copy the trigger uh, so yeah, so let's, I don't have to create a new, I just copy this across. Great. And let's get return target. All good. Connect that. And let's just call this end. And in the meta sound, we'll just create a new trigger. So promote to graph input and give that the name end. Coolio. And let's just see how that works. And it stops and then starts again. And that works fine, of course, but it's a bit abrupt. So let's add some fades to this. So we're gonna use uh, a real time, change some real time parameters. I'm gonna use the floats to do that. So let's jump back into the blueprint and then we're just gonna use the same 2D sound as before. We'll use that as a value, but we are gonna execute some floats. So I just type in float. And because it is the right object, it will find it. And then we can just set this up and copy that. And then let's just connect this up like so. And get the target. And then we'll just call this fade in, I think, and fade out. That seems to be the most applicable, so fade in. Uh, just fade out. Let's just put one on the second one for the value. So in our meta sound, we need two crossfades, ones for each channels, and they both need uh, two values. So we have something to fade in between. So let's just hook this up quickly. 
And actually, I'm going to change um, the values in the blueprint so it goes from 1 to 0. That makes a little bit more sense. So 1 will be on and 0 will be off. And let's just capitalize this also while we're at it. Cool. Uh, then we also need some trigger routes here so we can send uh, the float value to both uh, of these crossfades. So let's create inputs for this. So promote graph input, and let's call this, of course, fade in. And then this, uh, just make sure that the name is, is correct. It's the same as the one in the blueprint. And fade out, of course. And there we go. Then let's hook up the start and stop triggers. So uh, it sends the right values, like so. And I'm going to add a trigger delay on the end trigger because we're going to need some space for the fade out to actually happen. So it just doesn't stop abruptly in the middle of the fade. Uh, so yeah, so let's add that. And then let's check if everything is working. So it works, but it's too fast. So I'm going to put an interp2 uh, to the crossfades here so we get a little bit of a nicer fade to everything. Cool, let's try that. Uh, hang on, let's, write, let's run in the right direction. Okay, so what's happened here is that the trigger delay is too short, so essentially it cuts off uh, in the in the middle of the fade. So let's go back and change the trigger value to something longer. Let's put it to four. That should be enough time. And a nice little fade out. Perfect. <laughs> 